Musa. <laughs> Welcome to another fun-filled weekend edition of Sega City Sports Zoom Style. Zoom Style. Along with Lakina McGee, which is she, I am Sydney Brown. That's me. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter and the IG at CK80. Once again, at CK80, that's S-I-D-K-I-D-8-0. S-I-D-K-I-D-8-0. You can follow me at Keenan McGee on the Twitter and at Keenan Oscar McGee on the IG. You can watch Second City Sports right here on YouTube at War Media. Once again, at W-A-R-R Media. Every Monday and Friday right here on YouTube, you can catch this episode and all of our episodes first right here on YouTube at War Media every Monday and Friday. You can catch our podcast every Tuesday and Saturday at War on Anchor. Once again, every Tuesday and Saturday at WARR on Anchor. That kicks you over to Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, and the iHeartRadio app. On all podcast platforms, make sure you type in that search engine box, WARR on Anchor. And you can go to our website, weareregalradio.com. That's W-E-A-R-E-R-E-G-A-L radio.com. And you can follow us on all social media platforms, such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at War Media. Once again, at W-A-R-R Media. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Like, share, subscribe, and tell your friends. Thank you very much in advance for your support. And we are unapologetically fun. Lakina. Yours truly had fun back on Wednesday, April the 14th. <laughs> you know why? No, I know why, but tell, the, tell our, our wonderful, <laughs> tell our, our wonderful uh, f- you know, friends, viewers, and listeners why you're having fun. Uh, my favorite baseball team did something that I wasn't expecting. They accomplished this feat last year, and they accomplished it back on Wednesday. I'm talking about Carlos Rodon's first career no-hitter. It was a part of an 8 nothing win over the Cleveland Indians. Carlos Rodon had over 111 pitches. He pitched his first no-hitter, uh, no-hitting the Indians. He had seven strikeouts, and great call by White Sox TV announcer Jason Benetti. Uh, he kept on describing during the last uh, couple of innings that all that Carlos has gone through with the Tommy John surgery, of course, and now ex-manager Ricky Retorio throwing him in there and last year, in that situation against Cleveland, uh, high ironic in Cleveland. If you remember, we talked about that last year, Lakina. That was the game that cost the Sox the division title, and that was a bad stretch that they had toward the end of the shortened season last year. Uh, of course, uh, he was a free agent this past offseason. No one took him seriously, so the Sox brought him back for, I believe, $3 million for this year. And so far, he's been um, – up there is one of the top pitchers on the Sox rotation next to Lucas Giolito. We'll break down his performance coming up um, during this uh, during this past series against the Cleveland Indians. Uh, Carlos Rodon, uh, his last start uh, previous uh, against the Seattle Mariners on the road, he had nine strikeouts uh, against Cleveland in his no-hitter. He had total control of the ball game, obviously. His breaking ball was on point. He used a fastball when he had to. And it wasn't too many fly balls out there in left field. I know Andrew Vaughn, I know we, we as Sox fans are all worried about him due to the injury to Eloy Jimenez, but Andrew Vaughn's been okay out there in left field. He caught a couple of balls uh, out there uh, during that game on Wednesday. The, the player of the game, in my opinion, it was during the ninth inning, Jose Abreu dove with his – with his right leg and touched first base to get that runner from Cleveland out. It was a bang, bang play. I thought that the umpires were going to overrule it. Uh, Great job by the cameramen and women on NBC Sports Chicago. They had the up close uh, angles from all four or five angles and Jose Abreu, his foot clearly touched the back first before the runner hit first base. That was the play of the game. And as a fan that was watching, I said, after that play, I said, uh, Rodon was going to do this. Uh, at the time, Rodon was having a, a perfect game on the line. Of course, the next batter was uh, Indians catcher Roberto Perez. He was hit on the toe and took first base. Of course, did the umps get the call right? Technically, yes, but Rodon was upset that Roberto Perez couldn't get out the way. I get where Rodon was coming from. I thought he was going to lose his cool for a moment. Thank goodness he didn't, but Roberto Perez... 
uh, I'm going to the left side of my brain, which is the intelligent part of my brain. Uh, when you're being no head, you can find you have to find any way possible to get on. That was the easiest way that a Cleveland a batter could get on. So that's what happened. But the no hitter was still intact. Carlos Rodon did his thing, got the next out, and all was well in White Sox land. So congratulations to Mr. Rodon for pitching his first career no hitter. Well, the fact that you know he had been through so much for all the things you said, Sid. You know, mm-hmm. had Tommy John. You know, he was not tenured to come back to Chicago, then hitting 99 in the ninth inning of a no hitter. So, you know, he's it's a bit of a roller coaster ride for Rodon. And I remember he said that, you know, he was doing interviews. He said that one of the things that he loved was the fact that not only that he, there was some semblance of a crowd there, but also to his daughter was her to help you know, watch him throw the no hitter, the 20th in White Sox history, second only to the Dodgers. Only the Dodgers have more no hitters than the White Sox. I mean, look, I, though, Perez, like, that was actually very smart of him to try to like get it off his toe, his big toe, so that, you know, unfortunately he couldn't, mm-hmm. Rodon couldn't get the perfect game. But still, you know, Oh, but look at I me. Mean, that's why we have you have replay for and and that in that mm-hmm. sense. And look, I was afraid for Abreu that he was gonna like tear his ACL. He's lucky that he didn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. or big... injure his knee or injure his hamstring. Yeah. I, was, I had that thought in my mind too. I was like, oh crap. Uh, he knew what the situation was. His teammates knew what the situation was. Like uh, like you said, if it was a a, a regular boring four to two game, maybe he still would have done it. But the the magnitude of the moment, you do what he have to do to get the out. You know, the, that's what Jose Abreu did. I don't that, blame him for it. That was like a very like Dwayne Wise. Remember that that catch he made? Yes. <laughs> you know, to, to secure um, Mark Burley's um <clears throat> perfect game or was or no, it was a perfect game. But yeah, I mean, it was. Yeah, um, back in '09. Yeah, so it was. You know, look, you, you're happy for him. You know, they won the game. Now on the flip side, though, unfortunately, they they lost the series to the Indians. You know, they 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 did beat them eight nothing and then no hitter. But again, look at it, big picture, they. Lost the series to Cleveland, and and unfortunately now they're they're six and seven now as of this recording. And look, I, I think that this team is still plagued by the same problems that was happening in, in earlier in you know, this. Well, it's only like two weeks. Well, number I mean three weeks in, but it's this this still mm-hmm. keep happening. Like the the middle relief and the, the struggles, and also to the errors too. That's another thing. So I I think that look while this was a great, I think people got to look at it big picture and. And I think, you know, Sox have a, a, a very big, I don't want to say big series, but, like, you got a, a Red Sox team that's actually been playing pretty well. I know their yeah. nine-game uh, winning streak was snapped by the Twins on Thursday, but they've been playing pretty well. So, I, I mean, you know, the it's going to be very interesting that, that weekend series because I, I think that this is a sort of like a course of a team that you thought was going to be better than, We'll have a better start, and then you have a team that no one really expected anything, but now they have a hot start too. So that 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 series, I don't want to say this is a must series for the Sox, but I think you gotta have to like maybe just don't get swept by the the Red Sox. That's all I would say on that front. You're listening to the weekend edition of Second City Sports along with Lakina McGee, which is she. I am Cindy Brown. That's me as we talk about the Chicago White Sox and Carlos Rodon's no hitter from Wednesday night. Lakina, let's review this series with the White Sox and Indians. The teams actually split the two-game series, which I was realistically e- expecting. And so the Sox had the chance to take three out of four, but, of course, Thursday's game with uh, Lance Lamb pitching, uh, the White Sox once again could not muster up enough offense against good pitching. Of course, the Sox lost Thursday's series finale uh, on the south side, 42. Lance Lamb had uh, six innings pitch, had 10 strikeouts, he made the one mistake to Jose Ramirez, uh, which was a two-run shot. Of course, Cleveland added on a couple more runs after that. But the White Sox, I was encouraged a little bit. Uh, we'll review the series score-wise. The, the Sox won the opening game of the series 4-3 to three back on Monday. They lost the game 2-0. That was the Lucas Giolito game. He pitched his heart out, but uh, Garrett Crochet, I like him, Lakina, but he made a big boo-boo again, yes. <laughs> which cost the Sox uh, a loss on Tuesday. Of course, Wednesday's game, it was the Carlos Rodon no-hitter, of course, the loss on Thursday. I want to focus in on the offense. Johan, my kind of looks like he's starting to warm up a little bit. The Yamaneta, <laughs> mm-hmm. your man Mercedes. Uh, he looks like he's starting to warm up a little a, a little bit too. I know he he's one of the league leaders in batting average in baseball. He still continues to, to swing a hot stick. Jose Abreu, as you mentioned, Lakina didn't have the greatest series, but he made a hell of a play defensively in that Rodon no hitter on Wednesday. So the White Sox offense is starting to come around a little bit. Of course, Tim Anderson returned on Thursday, got his first hit 
uh, mm -hmm. on Thursday off the first pitch. So hopefully the White Sox can uh, gain momentum and not get swept by Boston. But uh, reviewing that series against Cleveland, uh, on the service they should have taken three out of four, but realistically – now, it didn't surprise me that these two teams split. Now, the bullpen, it actually came around a little bit, minus uh, Garrett Crochet's uh, gap on Tuesday. But uh, Evan Marshall has been doing this in his last few days. Of course, Michael Kopech, he may have to sit a little while longer in the bullpen <laughs> and to, to wait to get into the starting rotation. But he's been lights out uh, coming out of the bullpen. We talked about this before, Lakina, uh, for the last couple of episodes. So yeah. the bullpen started to come around a little bit. Liam Hendricks actually looked good um, the other night on Tuesday. So it looks like he's starting to uh, turn it around. We'll see how he goes as the uh, season goes along. But the bullpen is starting to uh, turn itself around a little bit. But the Sox still have to shore up that defense. They did on Wednesday uh, during uh, Carlos Rodon's no-hitter. But outside of that, uh, it's still a problem. And if it becomes a problem these next few weeks, uh, it's not going to be good. Well, and, and look, I think the consistency, I think everybody's got to be consistent. The pitching, the hitting, the defense, all of that has to be consistent. And the problem is that when one thing is good and, you know, two things are good, then, like, the other one is sort of like, you know. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, this is sort of like the thing with baseball. Everything ebbs and flows. And, look, I'm – Look, they're, they're, look, the middle reliever, look, they, they did pretty well against the Indians. That's a pretty good Indians lineup. And, look, they, they split their series. I, think, I mean, that that's okay. I mean, look, but I think you're starting to realize, especially with what the rest of the, the, the Central is doing, the AL Central, mm -hmm. that, look, that's still good. That's a pretty – I don't want to say it's a wide-open division, but I think, you know, with KC and Detroit having better starts than a lot of people thought they would, mm -hmm. I think – Look, you know, although I think Detroit has kind of fell, up, fell back to earth a little bit, but, you know, Minnesota's had their issues. You know, they, you know, basically kept from, they kept from getting swept against the Red Sox and the mm -hmm. Royals, you know, I, I mean, look, I think this, I think this to show you this division is going to be a fight in this division. It's not going to be like, it's going to be just the White Sox and the Twins. It's going to be like a fight for the Royals may have something to say about it. The Indians may have something to say about it. So I, I, I think that, look, this is going to be very interesting that AL Central. As we said before, coming to the season, Kansas City and Cleveland, I expect those, both those teams to be competitive. It's, it's turned out to be that way so far. Uh, like, I, like I also said, I, I think it's going to come down to the Twins and the White Sox ultimately at the end here. But you cannot ignore Kansas City especially. They're where, where the White Sox were a couple of years ago. I'm not saying uh, they're going to make the playoffs or anything like that, but they're going to be a competitive team. And it won't be too long. I'm, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but it won't be too long before the Sox face them for the first time this year. I believe it's sometime next month. Like I said, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but I can't wait for the White Sox and Royals to play so that it, it th those games are going to be uh, ones to watch if you're White Sox. Obviously, it's in the division. Those games are more important than um, than any of the teams that you play uh, in your outside your division. But uh, watching that Minnesota Boston series, uh, I had a chance to watch some of those games. Boston, you can call it magic, you can call it whatever, but they they took advantage of Minnesota's bad starting pitching. As I told you before, I'm not a big fan of that starting pitching when it's time to rise up, i.e. in the playoffs, they don't come through, okay? Mm -hmm. Their offense is, is, is a home run and nothing offense. They have some boppers over there with Nelson Cruz leading lean that bunch. But – if you're going to sit there and tell me that I should be afraid of the Twins as a White Sox fan, I'm not. Do you respect them? Yeah, because how they won this AL Central over the last few years. But am I afraid of them? No. Well, I think that let's wait till the we get to like, you know, about a couple of months in. I think look, mm -hmm. this is sort of like the time when you're seeing, okay, you know, okay, let, let's sort of like sort everybody out. Who's a contender? Who's mm -hmm. not? And, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, like, I think right now, I think that AL Central was probably going to be like a, a little more adventurous and a, and a little more competitive than a lot of people thought it would. But again, it, will that be the case about a month from now? Maybe not. But again, for right mm -hmm. now, Look, I think that the, the Royals are showing you that there are no pushovers. Minnesota, look, they've had their struggles, but I'm sure they'll get it together. The Sox are mm -hmm. having their struggles too, but I, you know, I have no, I have no doubt they're going to get it together too. So I, I think that people just need to kind of just chill and relax and just see how it all, how the season unfolds. 
Yeah, I agree with you there. And like you said, Lakina, now the White Sox go back on the road. We saw what happened when they went out on the West Coast. They took two out of three in Seattle. This should have been a, should have been a, a, a sweep, but that didn't happen thanks to a bad six in, in Seattle a week or so ago. Now, of course, they, they lost three or four to Anaheim to start the year. So they're back on the road against a team in Boston that's playing out of their minds right now. Will they be there in the end? Me personally, I don't think so, but you uh, – the, they're playing well right now. You have to respect that. So if you're the White Sox, you know, I, I don't think what happened on Thursday was a letdown from the no-hitter on Wednesday. They just got beat, and they didn't execute. And hopefully you don't take what happened on Thursday to the road on Boston this weekend for a big four-game series. Be, well, like I said, it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. So you listen to Second City Sports Zoom style along with Cindy Brown. I am Lakina McGee. Let's go to the north side. And talk Cubs. <laughs> I mean, I, I look what what can you say? I mean, just the the bats are having ice cold. The consistent lack like of consistency. We're, we're we're having the same conversation we've had for like the last two weeks. We did <laughs> look. We said in our Cubs for you, which you can check out. You know, through the War Media, both on YouTube and on mm-hmm. you know your various um, streaming platforms, audio streaming platforms, I should say. A war on anchor. A war on anchor. You know all the various anchors, Spotify, whatever. But Mm -hmm. I I mean, good grief! I mean, look, like I said, I mean they had like like seven hits. They had like eleven hits in there. Went Mm -hmm. over the Brewers, and they had like only three. They were shut out in the the series that they could have won it. And I I just think that at this point, I really don't know what to what to think of this this team at this point. I mean, look, you have Kyle, Kyle Hendricks. Some people thought, oh, maybe he had COVID. Turns out he didn't. And then he had, you know, some of their guys in their staff have had, you know, have, are having COVID issues. And you know, now they have to, you know, step away from the team due to protocols and such. So, no, not not making that an excuse. But again, I mean, you you need mm-hmm. look. They're five and seven. Look, I mean that NL. I mean the NL Central. I mean, look, if you look at the standings, no one's really running away from the division at this point. But again, you need that consistent pitching. You need that consistent hitting. Mm-hmm. And then unfortunately for the Cubs, at least so far, they got a tough series against Atlanta, who they too have had their issues, their various issues. We'll talk about that in a <laughs> little bit. But uh, Sid, I don't know how you feel, but look, I'm not giving up yet. But it's kind of they're they, they're making it hard for folks. I, I know Cubs fans have kind of been more apathetic at this point, and I, I don't know. But I think, like I said, the one the one mulligan that the Cubs have is that no one's run away from the division just yet, so they actually still have a shot, believe it or not. Yeah, that's the only mulligan mulligan that they have right now. Um, watching uh, some of the games from the around out uh, with the teams uh, within their division, St. Louis is off to a horrible start. Yep. Um, you know, Milwaukee dominated them um, the, uh, the last weekend. So, I, <laughs> Cincinnati, I don't know what's up with them. Pittsburgh actually looked up, it's looked okay, but like you said, like in, in Milwaukee, uh, of course, we all know what they did to the Cubs earlier this week, taking two out of three from them, but. Like like we said before the season started, like, Keenan, do you think, even though I did pick the Cardinals to win the division, do you think that, seriously, think that anybody was going to run, run away with this thing? Even when I thought that St. Louis, uh, when I picked St. Louis, I didn't think they were going to run away with this thing. And I told you before, and we've seen it throughout the first now, almost two, four weeks now, the season, that St. Louis Cardinals starting pitching, not good, unless you know something, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, Their starting pitch is not good. I, like I said before, I know people want to, you know, Arenado. They, have the, they got Arenado, okay, fine, but they're mm-hmm. pitching. Look, their starting pitching has not been good the last few years, and unfortunately, mm-hmm. And we've seen the game so far. It has showed. So, again, look, that division, I'll be surprised if anybody wins like 85 maybe. 85 might end up winning the division. So, I, I mean, who, who knows? <laughs> so, look, I, I'm not like, look, I'm not giving up on the Cubs yet, but we need to get that consistent hitting. You need, to, you need Brian to hit consistently. Rizzo. Um, you know, Baez needs to show up. And then, look, I know Arietta had a not, a, not didn't have a very good start against the – I guess the Brewers, pardon me, but look, mm-hmm. I mean, we need to get that that pitching and let that back end needs to step it up, dial it up, and I let 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 me let, let's hope that they can. And like I like we've been saying, that division is still there for the ticket, folks. So, you know, they're still in it, believe it or not. <laughs> Here's the thing, Lakina, from the from where I stand, I accept the Cubs for what they are. They're an inconsistent oh, yeah. team. 
as of this recording, they are five and seven with a huge series against Atlanta in your backyard this weekend, including that Sunday night telecast on ESPN. Probably for the world to see with that potential poop. But <laughs> but I accept the Cubs for what they are. And they have been like this for the last two or three years. They're inconsistent on offense. If they can get good starting pitching and get some timely hitting, that's how they win. But as we said before, the way this lineup is built, at least you could say that or say it from the last few years, when you have a, a lineup full of boppers, a home run hitters, that's that's how you win. If that's, if that's your strategy on how to win, you're going to have problems. And we've seen that before, especially in this town, on both sides of town. But sticking to the Cubs, you have a bunch of big bats in Atlanta that's all home runs or nothing with these long angles, nonsense, and things along that line. You're going to have problems. As I said before, especially with this Cubs team, you're going to have to create runs, hit and run, steal bases, a bunch of guys over. So you, you can't depend on your starting pitching to bail you out all the time. And so you got to get creative and get aggressive. Now, with the Cubs losing two to three, uh, two out of three to the Brewers earlier this week, of course the frustration uh, uh, went over in, in on Tuesday's mm-hmm. Tuesday's game, which they won. Thank you to Wilson Contreras' his go ahead home run late in the game. Uh, manager David Ross, uh, pitcher Ryan Terra, and um, game planning coach. <laughs> Go figure that one, folks. Mark Borzello w- were suspended after Terpa threw a pitch in front of the feet of uh, Milwaukee Brewers starter Brandon Woodruff. Uh, you could tell that uh, during that game, the, the Cubs were down until Contreras' home run late in that game. Frustration, you could tell from this team, is has boiled over. And, yeah. lo- and looking at this team going forward, if you let that carry you mentally if you let that hang over you which affects your which uh, which is going to affect your performance there's going to be problems you got to stop this right away if you're the cubs because uh, we know that you have problems but but uh it's this we say this all the time lakina in sports in particular professional sports is 90 percent mental 10 percent physical and there's no other example than the game of baseball. And looking at the Cubs right now, frustration has boiled over. Let that frustration and we're barely two weeks into the year. Let, let that and this is where we're going to see it. It's going to be, uh, it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets better. And I, well, I, that's why I say you let that frustration out on the field, whatever, like, you know, whatever there's, I don't know if there's invite on, I, I don't know, maybe just because they're frustrated because, you know, no one's hitting or that the pitching hasn't been consistent. I think, look, if you want, look, like I said, the only look, the only good news for Cubs fans is that that division is terrible. The NL Central's horrible, so they have a chance to kind of you know grip bull by the horns and you know and dial it up. And look, let this all this frustration lay it out on the field, lay it out on the baseball, let it out. You know, have a great pitching performance, score like seven or eight runs. If you can do that, then maybe you know what, maybe you can have a chance to sort of take control of the division. Right now, I mean, look, this all this frustration. It's not good for anybody. You can hear out your grievances on Twitter and on, you know, with the media and stuff like that. It's, it's not going to help. You know, let it all out in the locker rooms. Keep it in-house and just, you know, just, just like I said, just like I said, dial it up and, you know, see if we can, you know, get somewhere here. Unmute yourself, Sid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. First thing doing a Zoom broadcast for you young broadcasters out there, unmute yourself before you start talking. Yes. Yes. But, um, <laughs> but uh, if you have that little stuff, uh, uh, issues that you have around the clubhouse linger on, uh, it's going to affect you. And uh, you have to turn that around before anything else turns around. If it, that doesn't happen, there's going to be problems uh, down the road. For, the, for this club scene, as I said before, I accept, for, I accept what they are. They they're gonna be in some games this year, uh, because of their starting pitching outside of Kyle Hendricks. Like I said, Jake Arrieta outside of of the game against Milwaukee earlier this week, he's been pretty good. Okay, mm-hmm. you need Kyle Hendricks to come through. You need some of those other guys like Zach Davies and Azalea to uh, to step up. But this offense needs to be consistent. Like I said. They had to get aggressive too because you, you cannot depend on the home run all the time. You're going to be in trouble. And also too, Javi Baez, he's in the contract year. So is uh, so is Chris Bryant. So 
both of them are going to step up. And if that doesn't happen, you're really going to be in trouble. So I hate repeating myself, but I, I'm, I don't want to throw the, the baby out with the bathwater on this team either. I accept for who they are. Like you mentioned, Lakina, this probably will be 2006 when the Cardinals won the World Series. Remember, they won only 89 games. No, not 89 games. 83, 83. games uh, during the during yep. year. And that, that was one of the Cubs' worst seasons in recent history at that time. So, yep. <laughs> The Cubs can't turn it around, but someone's got to step up and show leadership of on and off the field. Yeah, that that I think that's what that's what they need to do at this point. And let's look, let's hope that yeah. look, let that frustration out on the field. You know, look, air out whatever grievances you're you're looking for that you're after, then just let just have that just let it all manifest and just, you know, let 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 your let their game do the talking. Know your personnel. Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right, so let, let's talk about the whole, you know, the whole uh, MLB. What, what has impressed you so far? The L.A. Dodgers. Excuse <laughs> my uh, Vince Scully. <laughs> but uh, watching their, uh, uh, their series against the Colorado Rockies, of course, we all know that the Rockies are re- rebuilding, but uh, the Dodgers had an impressive win on Thursday night. They spotted the Rockies five, one, five <laughs> runs early, but they came back. Uh, they have uh, – Justin Turner, he had a big blast on Thursday yeah. to have them get back in the game. Of course, they have a role player stepping up. David Price actually picked up his first save on <laughs> on Thursday. Kenley Jensen, after a shaky opening uh, series um, at Colorado, he's picked it up a little bit. But uh, the Dodgers are looking good. Mookie Betts is doing his thing. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to hand them the World Series trophies just yet because. Uh, a lot of things can happen. We're barely two weeks in, as we mentioned before, but they're looking good so far. The San Diego Padres, uh, I know uh, that they've been on the road recently. They're 95 as, as of this recording, and they have a big series this weekend uh, hosting the Dodgers in San Diego. So San Diego's been looking good. Uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks, boo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I watched a couple of their games against Oakland. Uh, Oakland really uh, got into them a little bit, so. I, I've been impressed by those uh, teams so far. Uh, the Atlanta Braves, I know they're off to a uh, to a bad start. I know they're playing the Cubs this weekend in Wrigley as we speak. But uh, watching that game on Thursday against the uh, Miami Marlins and that comeback victory, uh, hopefully they can use that as a turnaround if you're an Atlanta Braves fan. That young team is too good to get uh, to uh, again off to a 5-8 and eight start. We know it's early. But hopefully they'll use that comeback win on Thursday to turn things around. I think the Dodgers are showing the Dodgers are showing you why they're defending World Series champs. They're kind of picking up exactly mm-hmm. where they left off, and look that their pitching has been you know pretty you know consistent. But it's been their hate that's kind of saved that pitching whenever mm-hmm. that pitching you know messes up or doesn't have a good start. It was really their hate that's kind of saved them. So. You know that that mm-hmm. the fact that they were able to kind of come back from <laughs> from that deficit on Thursday against the Rockies, it just mm-hmm. shows. Just again, it just shows that's what championship you know caliber teams do. So, and I think they mm-hmm. they showed you why. And look, the Mets have look the Mets have kind of been sort of like you know they have been able to play because of COVID issues from the other team. But you know, look, they've they mm-hmm. looked pretty good. I mean, they you know as of right now they've won three in a row. Um, the Phillies have kind of came back to earth a little bit. Um, so has the Marlins. They kind of went, they had had a hard hot start, but then they faded out. And look, I mean, the, the the Mariners have looked pretty good too. I mean, that's a really good young squad. You know, we saw what the you know, they did to the White Sox in that last game of their series last week. You know, they've looked mm-hmm. good. Um, you know, the, the the A's, I mean, they've won five in a row, but they're, you know, like that, that, that AL West, I think, you know, look, the, yeah. the Astros as of this recording, they've lost five in a row, but look, I think they're sort of like, even the, the Rangers, even the Rangers, I know was really expecting anything from them. They've won three <laughs> in a row as of, you know, as of, you know, this recording. So it, it's, it's just like, I think at, at this point right now, we, we really don't, when you touch the Dodgers, you, we really don't know who are the, who the contenders are. Cause everyone is like, for the most part, so like log jam in the stand in the standings. So I, I, look, I think that right now, look, I think it's the Dodgers. I don't want to say, look, I'm not giving them the trophy either, but I think the Dodgers are showing you why they are the defending World Series champions. <laughs> Looking at the AL West standings, remember Seattle had a hot start a couple of years ago and, and, they, and they faded. So 
Am I a big believer in them? No, they're playing good right now, as you mentioned, but do you think it's going to hold up in the long haul? I don't think so. Nothing personal, but no. Like you said, Oakland has won five in a row. They started to turn it around. Like I said, I watched a couple of their games against Arizona on the road this week, and, and oh, as I said before, watch out for Oakland. So uh, they, they're going to turn it around. Houston, I know they struggled over the weekend against uh, against the Astros, so and those two teams are going to go at it all season long. So the AL West stands that you look at it right now, mm-hmm. that's not going to be in the final standings by the time uh, the season is over. Going back to the NLEs, I know the Mets are up there right now. They play the, play the least amount of games uh, with eight. They car- currently lead the division uh, by a game over Philadelphia. And we know what the uh, NL Central the division is. Of course, the NL West. Uh, surprisingly, the San Francisco Giants are yeah. eight and four. And so I know they're technically ahead of the San Diego Padres. Do you think that's going to last? Me personally, I don't yeah. think so. I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it's going to last. I mean, no one's really expecting too much from them. And they're kind of like, as they say, they're still you know, starting to kind of, you know, start over to mm-hmm. and rebuild. So I don't think and a lot of those guys that are there now, they'll probably be in, in different teams by the time the trade deadline commences. So I, I look, it's great that the, what the Giants are doing with, you know, a new managerial staff and such, but I'm not expecting them to stay up there for. I'm, I'm right there with you with the with the Mariners too. I think I think they'll they'll have a hot start, but I don't think they're going to peter out as the season goes on. Yeah, we wish you to see how that division turns out as the season goes along. You're listening to the weekend to the week, weekend edition of Second City Sports, <laughs> along with Lakina McGee. I am Sydney Brown. Lakina, since we have these last few minutes left, let's transition over to another team in Chicago that's giving fans and us personally a big headache, and that's the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> One, two, three, Musa. <laughs> it's going to take more than that. It's going to take a lot yeah, more than yep, that. Yep, that's yep. not going to help. Currently, as of this recording, they're on a four-game losing streak. Uh, their last uh, game uh, was played on Wednesday night at the United Center. They lost to the Orlando Magic in the return of Wendell Carter Jr. and Otto Porter Jr. And Michael Carter uh, 115. Williams. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Ooh, good grief. Was, but anyway, was, yeah, you know, it was that bad, folks. It was a 115 to 106 loss. <laughs> Lakina, Orlando was up by more than 20 points during this contest. And uh, – <laughs> I told you before we started recording, I did not look at one minute of their game. I saw a, a couple of highlights, and, and and that was that was it for me. I know Zach Levine led the team with 30 points. I, I, I <laughs> what do we say for the last few episodes, Lakina? Outside of Zach Levine and now uh, Nikolai Vujicic, you got to have somebody else to step in and step up. I, I, right now, outside of those two guys. Uh, taking a look at the box score from Wednesday night's loss. Mm-hmm. The next guy at the Vuja Tish is 29 points. Kobe White, no, Daniel Tice, sorry. Tice, scored sorry 16, that was Tice. Uh, Daniel, yeah, Daniel Tice scored 16 points coming off the bench, and that was it. Larry Marketing, in 17 minutes, how many points did he score? Six. Kobe White, in 12 minutes of action, how many points did he score? As we turn that volume down, <laughs> um, he scored a total of two points. <laughs> And you and you got uh, Troy Brown Jr., who's been very impressive. We talked about him in our last couple of episodes. He only had three points. But outside of those terrible numbers, Lakina, coming off your bench, th- I have nothing. And there was nothing you're, you're, on Wednesday you're, night. You're flummoxed. You're flummoxed. Um, look, I was flummoxed watching that game. I, I mean, look, I, I was just like, what, really? Like, this is, the, this is Orlando. This is the team. that get, Basically, it took their best player. You took their best player, and yet, mm-hmm. you know, you, you gave, you know, two of their our worst players. But then, look, well, look what happened. I mean, I'm, look, we'll, we'll talk more in, in NBA in our, in our next um, next block. But I, I think, look, at this point for the Bulls, I, I, I have nothing. And I think, look, I wasn't expecting them to be, like, the number four or five seed in the East. The, the, look, the, here's the crazy part about this, Sid. I mean, the fact that the East is so bad, they're still, like, right there, like, in the play-in game. <laughs> they're, like – they're in 10th place still with every, despite, despite the losing streak, despite everything that's happened. Now Zach Levine's going to be out for a few games because of, you know, COVID protocols and safety mm-hmm. protocols. They had to cancel practice on Wednesday because of that, but every, everyone else on the Bulls have test, you know, tested negative for COVID. Apparently so is Zach too, but I guess since he was around somebody mm-hmm. who had COVID, 
now he's got to step away from mm -hmm. look i know there're going to be some folks that say well he was embarrassed by the the magic loss he needed some time look just to stop it okay y'all 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 really Thank are reaching you. You, you guys really are reaching and guys have way too much time on your hands but yeah you know, back, back to the bulls i mean look this just shows you that look this roster is going to look a lot different next year Used to look, we saw what happened during the trade the trade deadline. That's just the tip of the iceberg. A lot of these guys will mm -hmm. not be here. Um, you know, let's see, maybe Temple could kind of be that facilitator that a lot of people thought what that a lot of people say was missed, you know, while he was out. Mm -hmm. it, look, it'll be very interesting. And now that Zach's gonna be out too, ooh, boy, it's it, it could get ugly, folks. It could get ugly, and as we said before, uh, this was the uh, the best part of, uh, of the season right here for Chicago was their schedule. Uh, right now, the, they haven't taken advantage of it. They're on a current losing streak. Uh, they looked bad against Memphis on Monday. I did check out some of that, and that, that, that would give you a headache unless you're a Memphis fan. But uh, back to Wednesday's game, there was just no effort, no heart. It's just going it, – it's – this is the worst Bulls game, uh, the worst that the Bulls have looked since the uh, the trade, which is now over a month old now. So this is the worst that the Bulls have looked. Now, we, we've talked about on this show before, Lakina like, you know, re reviewing some games, that they uh, won a two plays here, they could have won the game. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. To not come out with the intensity and the effort and just going around, uh, uh, going around like in a bunch of circles and just going through the motions, that's what I cannot stand. And you are paid for professionals, and you go out and do something like that and feeling sorry for yourself, that's un inexcusable. Yes, you're going to have bad days. We all have bad days. I get it. But when this becomes a habit, hopefully it does it for this Bulls team, whether they make the playoffs or not. But if this comes a habit where you just go around feeling feel sorry for yourself, just going through the motions, that's a problem. Well, and I think, look, you look, you look at it two ways. I mean, maybe the scheduling, they're, they're playing a lot of, you know, Every other, every other, um, you know, night that you're playing a game, you know, you got a couple, you've had to go public back to backs. Look, I, I get it. You know, it can be exhausting. You know, maybe they're mentally and physically exhausted, or maybe after the trade, the trade of Wendell, you know, maybe, maybe some guys feel that, well, I don't, why should I bother? I don't know. I'm probably not going to be here next year. But even still, if you're Laurie Marketing and you're trying to get, get paid big money, you should be playing <laughs> better than you are. And especially if you're Kobe White, you're trying to get, you know, perhaps maybe show AK and Mark Eversley that you can be part of that piece. Because, look, I'm, mm -hmm. I don't, look, they're not going to trade Zach Levine. I've heard some people say, well, maybe they should trade Zach. No, because you're going to be right back where you want to be like Orlando, what they're going through. No. Mm -hmm. all, you, all the best you can do is just, just hope you get a top four pick from that, that, that top four pick. Try to get somebody. Maybe try to get someone. Try to get somebody else. I don't know. I know some people said – the people have said ball, but again, you know, is he really going to be the guy that's going to you know, take you over the top? I, I, I doubt it. Lonzo Ball going to take you over? I, I don't think so. Um, I think he's a better option than what you have right now. He, yeah, th and that's true. That's true. That you're, you're, you're right about that. I mean, he probably is a better option, but you got to think that there probably are other options out there. So, but again, I think this, this team should be showing more effort than they are, and it, it's unfortunate. Look, look, Tice has been you know playing very well. Troy Brown Jr. has been playing mm -hmm. very well. Look, mm -hmm. that young is that young. You're gonna you know what you're gonna get from him. Um, I'm just I'm talking about the Laurie Marketers. I'm talking about the Kobe Whites. Those <laughs> are the players that we should be seeing more of. Mm -hmm. And look, either one or both will probably be gone next year. I, I don't know, but look, we don't know what you know AK and Eversley are saying in their minds. We didn't know they were gonna trade for Vucevic. We don't know what they're gonna do in the offseason. So but but then look, you still got a you still got a game, a lot of games left to play. You got some winnable games. You're still right there for the play. I know some people say, well, let's, let's, let's start taking out. Look, they're not, it's not going to happen. The East is terrible. That's not, unless they, like, totally yeah. bottom out, that's not going to happen. I'm with you. That's not going to happen. But getting back to uh, – I'm sure you've seen this more than I have, especially on Twitter with Bulls fans, and I've been hearing some conversations on the, the, both the ESPN 1000 and 670 to score. I get the frustration to a point with some Bulls fans, uh, even before this losing streak. And we talked about it before, about some games that they like, get away, even before the trade, mm -hmm. okay? If they just won half those games, they'll be in better position, like the New York Knicks. Okay. Let's just say the Bulls were six in sixth place, maybe fifth. Let's just say six to be realistic, okay? Okay. Do you think they're really the sixth best team in the Eastern Conference right now? No. Not a chance. But, no. But the, for, for what the – the, what the situation is in, uh, entails right now 
with the shortened schedule, with the 72-game season, with the uh, protocols that, that the players have to deal with, which every team has to deal with, you know, strange things can happen. But the, here's the frustrating thing if you're a Bulls fan. The Bulls are not taking advantage of the situation. We all said coming into this season, Lakina, that this was an evaluation year, correct? Yes, sir. It's a, it was an evaluation year. And I still believe that. And that's what's still going on right now, obviously. Okay. But if, uh, if this team said that they said that there should be a better team and perhaps a playoff team, correct? That was the goal going into the year, correct? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yes. And sir. that was, the, I'm, I know that was, that's the goal after this trade for Vucevic now over a month, right? Correct? Mm-hmm. Keep going. If, you know, you got to walk it like you talk it right now for the Bulls team. I believe they'll eventually get better. It depends on what the front office does, but focusing on the here and now, as I said before, if you go around feeling sorry for yourself and not taking advantage of, of, of the situation, uh, there's going to be a problem. You got to play a full 48 minutes and give consistent effort. You can't just say, well, Zach is going to bail us out. Now, Vujicic is going to bail us out. If those two guys are on their game, we can hop on their backs and see what happens. Maybe we can win. If those two guys or one of those guys are not doing anything, there's going to be a problem. If that's your game plan, there's a problem already. You just mentioned the players that are going to have to step up, Lakina. Head coach Billy Donovan can only do so much. You know, calling team meetings and saying stuff in front of the press. Uh, you can only use that, um, I don't want to say trick, but you can use that strategy to a certain point. And I like the the job that Billy Donovan has done this year, by the way. So for those of you that are wondering what I think of uh, head coach Donovan, he's been doing a, a good job. Yeah. I know no no coach is perfect, but this is the roster he's been dealt with, okay? And I think given people... all, yeah, given all the, situ- all the circumstances going around with the team, uh, he, he's, he's done – a good job. Uh, he's a good coach. And he's going to be here for the long haul. Like you said, the, the roster that we're looking at right now is not going to uh, be the same when we, we commence in for the 2021-22 season uh, in the fall in October. Like, 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 like I've been saying, look, I wasn't expecting this team to be like a top you know, the, I was expecting it to be a four mm-hmm. or five. No, no. Look, this team, the, the, look, know your personnel. And I think that's the mm-hmm. problem some Bulls fans are having. People are not, they don't know their personnel. Yes, you've got mm-hmm. Vucevic. Yes, you've got Levine. But, yeah, really don't have nobody else after that. I mean, look, mm-hmm. Ty, look Tyson's been pretty good. Look, you know, Brown Jr. has been kind of up and up and down. You know, Garrett Temple is sort of like, like I said, that young, sad young. You know, you know what you're going to get from him. But, like I said, the problem is that the rest of this roster, look, like I said, most of these guys are not going to be here next season. We, they'll mm-hmm. probably be traded or you know released or you know someone will give Lowry like a hundred million or whatever so they can I I don't know, but I mean look here's the thing with 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 the uh, with this team I mean look they are who you who they are and mm-hmm. look, are, should they be have a better record sure should they be mm-hmm. better than what they are right now yeah of course but again you know I think that the problem is that you have you know, too many parameters I mean look I mean. You know, Don, Coach Donovan can only do so much. I know some people are actually blaming him for some of his rotations and stuff like that. Look, he has to deal with what he has. Mm-hmm. Like, th- th- this is not like, look, they're, they're not the Nets where they can, you know, like all like half their guys to, k- to take a day off and the other half can, you know, pick up the slack. That's just not the case. This is this this team wasn't built for that. The roster that was, you know, shown, you know, wasn't built for that kind of, you know, for that kind of thing so i think people need to sort of figure out you know know your personnel know who the team mm-hmm. really is because they're, they're not who you know not to quote you know not to you know switch sports or you know quote uh, NFL, you know the late great denny green denny green here but they are who you thought they were yep <laughs> i think we should end in 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 this segment with that quote r.i.p denny green <laughs> Let's take this 20 second timeout. You're listening to the weekend edition of Second City Sports along with Lakina McGee, which is she, I am Sidney Brown, which is me. On the flip side, we'll preview this weekend's action from the Around the National Basketball Association. We'll, we also will review the week that was in the world of basketball and also uh, spring football coming to a major network. Hmm. And we'll ask you guys a question regarding Jackie Robinson Day. 
as we are as baseball is celebrating uh, throughout the weekend, and we'll have a whole lot more. You're listening to the week to the weekend edition of Second City Sports. Welcome back to the second half of the weekend edition of Second City Sports Zoom style. Zoom style. Along with Lakina McGee, which is she, I am Sydney Brown. That's me. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter and the IG at SidKid80. Once again, that's SidKid80. That's S-I-D-K-I-D-80. S-I-D-K-I-D-80. You can follow me at Kina McGee on the Twitter and at Kina's Grimmie on the IG. You can catch this program, Second City Sports, first on YouTube at War Media. Once again, right here on YouTube at W-A-R-R Media every Monday and Friday. Once again, that's every Monday and Friday right here on YouTube at War Media. You can still catch our podcast every Tuesday and Saturday at War on Anchor. Once again, every Tuesday and Saturday for the audio version at WARR on Anchor, which kicks you over to Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, and that iHeartRadio app. Make sure you type in that search engine box on all podcast platforms, WARR on Anchor. And you can follow us on all social media platforms. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at War Media. Once again, at WARR Media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. And you can go to our website, weareregalradio.com. Thank you very much in event in advance for your support. Like, share, subscribe, and tell your friends. Let's kick off the second half of the program, Lakina, by diving to the rest of the of the NBA world. Uh, before we preview this weekend's games, let's go back to the best and worst of the association from this past week. Lakina, I'll start off. Congratulations to the city of Los Angeles. They are starting to let fans in to attend games including, uh, in the Staples Center. That's including the Lakers, the Clippers for the basketball teams, and the Los Angeles uh, Kings for hockey, of course, the Honda Center, which is in Orange County. That's where the Anaheim Ducks play. Fans will be uh, attending games in that arena as well. Of course, on the court uh, uh, this past Thursday, Lakina, the Lakers lost to their uh, historic rival, the Boston Celtics, 121 to 113. Jalen Brown had a game of his life. Uh, the high total for him for the season uh, is 40 points. He scored that on Thursday, grabbed nine rebounds, and dished out three assists. Taylor Horton Tucker came came up big for the Lakers, scoring 19 points, grabbing seven rebounds, and dishing out seven assists. Lakina, we talked about this before with this Lakers team. Uh, is Kyle Kuzma, Andre Drummond, who did not play on Thursday. He has to uh, get back healthy. And once those two guys are in the fold, they have to hold it down until LeBron James and Anthony Davis gets back. And it looks like it's going to be on about another two or three weeks before both those guys get back. Lakina, as I said before in the last episode, for the Lakers, uh, all, all the players that are available to play right now, this is about who's going to get the most playing time come playoff time. Well, and also to the good news for AD is that he has been cleared to practice, although, like you said, it's probably still going to be a couple of weeks before he'll be able to play. But, you know, w- with that said, though, I think, look, you know, of course, Andre Drummond did not play on, on Thursday, you know, still noticing that toe injury, mm-hmm. still want to give it a little bit of a rest. But um, I think, look, I think people, look, you know, Horton Tucker, you know, you know kudos to him for his effort. But, again, I think they need AD and LeBron back. So I, I, I think – Look, I think this is going to – hopefully now with, you know, AD being cleared to practice, mm-hmm. so hopefully, hopefully you know, with a couple more – in a couple of weeks, you know, they'll have – they'll be at full strength. We can kind of see the team that we all thought they – you know, seeing that team and, you know, at the, you know, the Lakers team that we thought that you know, would be, especially with some teams having injury issues. We'll get to that in a second. Mm-hmm. But as I made that um, – sorry, Kevin Hart, I love you, but, you know, not, not, not right now um, – but but yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah. I mean, look. I mean, look. Shorter's got to step up. You know, Caldwell Pope's got to step up. Uh, Wesley Matthews, he has to step up too. Because I think, mm-hmm. look, unfortunately for for them, I think, you know, for the Lakers, it, it just shows you that without AD and LeBron and and Drum now Drummond, that that's not you know this team just isn't going to be like that top team in the West that we all thought they would be. So I think it. Hopefully, you know, in a couple of weeks they will be at full strength and that they'll you know, mm-hmm. we can kind of. You know, look, they're look, they're doing. Look, these guys are doing what they can, but again, there's they're not at that level with AD LeBron or even or even the other AD Andre Drummond. Speaking of the team that beat the Lakers on Thursday, the Boston Celtics, uh, 
Lakeen, it looks like we put a, a fire under there. You know what? So, of course, <laughs> uh, they're on a, a current a winning streak. Of course, let's go back to Tuesday's game. Jason Tatum had a go-ahead three-pointer. Uh, that was part of his 32-point performance as they defeated the Portland Trail Blazers 116-115. to Lakeena, uh, I've been back in Portland for many years during these radio shows, and including this one. Uh, they, Portland's starting to slip a little bit, and maybe uh, Damian Lillard's MVP chances as well. Question mark? Looks like it. I mean, look, he has struggled lately. The team itself has struggled. And, look, that was a big win for Boston, you know, for their confidence per confidence level because mm-hmm. they kind of, like, were going back into those bad habits again. But, you know, the good news is they were able to kind of they were able to bounce back from that. That was a big win for them. And, you know, Portland, unfortunately, they're, they're picking the wrong time to, you know, kind of go through the slump. And I think, you know, mm-hmm. and I think, you know similar to the Bulls, I think, you know, with – with the, all these teams playing, you know, condensed scheduling, and, you know, these guys are – look, we were, ta- we were talking about the Nets in a second, you know, what happened with mm-hmm. that game against the Sixers. But, I, look, I think for me, I think I'm hoping Portland can get it together. I mean, like I said, even in the 72-game season, especially the season like this where you're playing a lot of games, you know, kind of like in unison. Mm-hmm. So, look, I, I hope I hope they can get it together, but I, I'm a little – they've got some, some – you, know, you know, a couple of, you know, tough games coming up, so – We'll see what Portland can do, but I'm, I'm not too worried about Portland just yet, but we'll see. Let's also give some love to the Phoenix Suns. They won their two games this week. They defeated the, the Sacramento Kings Sacramento, on Thursday, yeah. and they defeated a lot. Shout out to our good friend of the show, Miss Alana Tech Hour. They have the Phoenix Suns defeated the Miami Heat on Tuesday, 106 to 86. DeAndre Aiden has really been impressed with these last couple of games, Lakina. As uh, we said on the this, this show, this, the last episode, I'll say it here Monty Williams should be the leading candidate for head coach of the year. Uh, Chris Paul, he probably won't get MVP. He should receive more consideration for it. Uh, he's been playing well. Devin Booker, of course, he's the leader of the team scoring-wise. Uh, uh, could that pro- cause a problem for a couple of these top teams, including Denver, which we'll get to their situation in a second? Uh, uh, can Phoenix cause a problem for a couple of these teams? Yes. Do I expect them to reach the NBA Finals? No, because they're still a piece or two away. But I like the way they're playing right now. This is not a fluke. Remember, folks, before the injuries to the Lakers and now the Denver Nuggets, which we'll get to in a sec, they were up there, folks. So this has not just been a a barrage for the last month. They've been playing good all season long. And the impact of Chris Paul is real. DeAndre Aiden has decided to step step up. Denver Booker, he's no joke. And so I I like this Phoenix Suns team. I'm not saying they're going to do amazing things come playoff time, but uh, they're going to be a tough out for someone. Well, and look, like you know, are they're they're kind of like proving to you that they are kind of right up there with the Jazz and both the LA teams and such. So, look, I think having Devin Booker and getting Chris Paul, I think that was sort of like having the guy that's been there that has, you know, is a veteran that that you know will listen. You know, a lot of these guys will listen to him, mm-hmm. and you know, Aiden has stepped up too. I mean, there's like look, there's a lot of depth in that in that Suns team, of course. You know, besides Booker and CP3. And DeAndre Aiden. I mean, look, there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of guys like Jay Crowder has, you know, he's been up and down, but, you know, he's, he has some big, you know, has some big moments. Um, you know, Mikhail Bridges has some, has, has had some big moments for them too. So mm-hmm. having, look, having that, you know, that depth and also too, that they're very young overall and also Monty Williams having a coach there that has been there mm-hmm. that knows, you know, what it takes to kind of like when has seen championship teams. So I, I think, Look, I think that the Phoenix is showing you that, look, maybe, look, maybe we could be up there with the guys. I mean, look, you never, in a season like this, you never know. So I wouldn't, you know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't, you know, put a, a stamper on them not being, you know, up there with, you know, will they make the finals? Probably not. But I think, look, they may, they could make the Western Conference finals. I mean, we'll mm-hmm. see. Certain things have happened. Yeah, let's review Wednesday's action. Lakina, let's lead off with the headline game. The Dallas Mavericks defeated the Memphis Grizzlies 114 to 113, thanks to Luka Doncic's last second shot, which was part of his 29 point performance. Lakina, we talked about this before. The Dallas Mavericks are six games above 500 as of this recording. They have played much better on the road. They're trying to stay out of that seven spot so they don't, won't have to play in that playing game. They're ugly. Uh, the early season struggle stuff, you can forget about that. It's in the rearview mirror. I really like the way this Dallas team is playing right now with Kleber, Josh Richardson. 
Yeah, Tim Hardaway Jr., hope he can step up. Luka Doncic is the man right now, but uh, Christos Porzingis, uh, up until this game, he's been playing very well. As I said before, if he can stay healthy, he can really uh, help Dallas uh, become that team in the playoffs that you you don't want to play because we saw we all saw what happened last year without Porzingis. Luka was playing on a bad ankle and darn near, darn near uh, eliminated the Clippers. Of course, we all know what issues that they had last year. We'll get to their uh, East Coast road trip results in just a moment. But uh, this Dallas team is starting to finally come together. Hopefully, that, hopefully if Luka doesn't get hurt and Christos Porzingis can stay healthy, that's going to be a dangerous, another dangerous team come playoff time. Well, and I think that was sort of a prayer by Luca. I think even he admitted after the game, he thought, look, that was mm-hmm. the prayer that was just answered. And so it was so like, I didn't know what was it was. It was. <laughs> Don't apologize for it. You made the shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but, like, but you know, he's very stoic that way. So, but that's why, you know, a lot of people love him. But, I mean, look, I mean, they're, they're, look, they're getting a lot of, they get a lot of contributions besides, you know, look, you know, Tim Harway Jr. has made has some big, big, you know, big points off the bench. Um, Dwight Powell has had some big, big, you know, points for them too. Look, they they JJ Redick has kind of contri- has contributed ever since ever since that trade. So I, I think look, I think that I think that the Mavs are showing you that look, hey, maybe look, maybe don't question Rick Carlisle. Maybe because of the fact that you know they had COVID issues and half their guys were you know you know had to you know had to not you know not be with the team because of COVID issues. So I think now that you know everyone's healthy and everybody's kind of you know, back into the groove. I think now we're seeing that, okay, you know what, this Dallas team, this is a team that we expected. So look, you know, kudos to Dallas and the fact that they've been able to kind of, you know, they're kind of, you know, they got a little bit of a, like a, bit of a cushion between themselves and the Grizz for that to be out of that eighth, eighth playoff spot so they don't have to do the play-in. So we'll see what happens. I mean, they got a, they got a pretty tough schedule too, you know, in these next couple of weeks, but we'll see what they do. The other headlight game from this past Wednesday was the Philadelphia 76ers. They continued to roll. They defeated the injured New Jersey. So who's, I say New Jersey, good grief. The Brooklyn Nets, 123 to 117. Joel Embiid continues to impress as he tries to up his resume for perhaps a regular season MVP award. He scored 39 points, grabbed 13 rebounds. Kyrie Irving, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the only superstar that played for the Brooklyn Nets, he scored uh a team high 37 points and dish down nine assists. Lakina, uh, a couple of things about this game. One, uh, I was watching this game via my computer, mm-hmm. <laughs> via the Yes Network feed. I know most of y'all saw that broadcast via ESPN. But uh, Lakina, uh, DeAndre Jordan, I'll bring, I'm bringing his name up now, and this is going to affect the, what we're going to mention n- next. Mm-hmm. Uh, DeAndre Jordan, who's, uh, who was in the starting lineup on Wednesday, he grabbed 11 rebounds. Uh, according to the Brooklyn Nets broadcast, great broadcast team, by the way, of Sarah Kustak and Ian Eagle, friend mm-hmm. of the Dean David Show, by the way. Yep. Um, they brought up this statistic, uh, DeAndre Jordan's 11 first quarter rebounds. That was the most since... January of 2000, and guess who grabbed 13 rebounds for the Nets 21 years ago in one quarter, in the first quarter? Ooh, 21 years ago. Oh, boy. Don't Google. Don't Google. What? I'm right, what? I'm not, look, I'm not, I'm not Googling. Uh, I'm not even going to try. Okay. I won't even try to guess. Um, hmm. All the way back to 2000. Um, I have no idea. Five, four, I, I, three, I, I, I give two. up. Jamie Fike, number 14. Oh, I never would have. You could have given me like 10 minutes. I never would have. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, I barely remember him, but he was the one that replaced Jason Williams, the, the limo driver shooter. Yeah, we won't get into that. that but, yeah. but remember, he broke his leg that year. Yeah, remember, New did. Jersey was supposed to make a deep playoff run with those teams. It was him, Sam Cassell, and Keith Van Horn, but all those guys had injuries, and the, that, that blew up in their faces. That's how they got Stephon Marbury. But anyway, Jamie Fike grabbed 13 first-quarter rebounds in January of 20, uh, of uh, 2000. Of course, DeAndre Jordan grabbed 11 rebounds in the first quarter of that game. Looking at that game, Lakino was competitive in the first half, but uh, Brooklyn didn't bring it in that second half. Joel and B, as I mentioned a second ago, he had a monster game. Uh, I know uh, head coach Steve Nash for the Nets said after the game that uh, they weren't going to show too much uh, to Philadelphia just in case they meet in the Eastern Conference Finals, which I think is going to happen. But <laughs> yeah, I, if Brooklyn's not going to worry about this game too much. And DeAndre Jordan, 
he's very lucky that he's getting extra minutes only because that earlier this week, uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, who signed with the Nets a, a few weeks ago, he announced his retirement due to health issues. Uh, he, he played for about 13, 14 years. And, and this is a Chicago connection to this. Mm-hmm. Of course, LaMarcus Aldridge was drafted in the 07, dra- what's the 06? It was the 06, 06 draft. draft. The, the 06 draft that he was mm-hmm. traded uh, in exchange for Tyrus Thomas, who was a head case here in Chicago, and that was doing the end of the Scott Scouts era, for those of you that may not remember. But LaMarcus Aldridge had a, a very good career. Uh, it was him and Damian Lillard uh, for those early teams in Portland in his career. And he played with Brandon Roy and uh, injured uh, Greg Oden. He had his issues off the court later on. I'm talking about Oden, but you know, he was injured when he was a member of the uh, Trailblazers. Of course, LaMarcus Aldridge took the money and went to San Antonio a few years ago, became an all-star there again a couple more times. He's had a very good career, but he's not going to have a chance to uh, get the ring with Brooklyn. Uh, he's going to take care of his health, which is a good thing. I do not knock him for that. I was listening to uh, the Odd Couple on Fox Sports Radio on Thursday, and Rob Parker and Chris Broussard brought up this question. Is LaMarcus Aldridge, who has the numbers, do you think he's a Hall of Famer? He's he's in the Hall of very of the very very good, but I don't think he belongs in the Basketball Hall of Fame. I think Chris Bosh and Chris Webber, who's been knocking on the door these last few years, came getting left at the front gate. He deserves to get in, by the way. But uh, Chris Bosh and, and Chris Webber, both those guys deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Those are Hall of Famers, not Lamarcus Aldridge. Nothing personal about Lamarcus Aldridge is not a Hall of Famer. Well, for, well, remember, he went to Texas, too. He had a nice, you know, a good career at Texas. So I think that's going to help him get into the basketball Hall of Fame. Because remember, mm-hmm. it's just, it's not just, you know, your MBA or your professional career. It's your college career. If you look like, in the Olympics, college, too, if you participate yeah, in the Olympics. He, yeah, he actually, he won a gold medal in the Olympics. So I, I think that's going to be what's going to, you know, get him in, I think, you know, regardless. I mean, yeah, I mean, look, if you, his MBA school, you know, stats alone, we just talked about, okay. Okay, he didn't have a, you know, he had a good career, but again, he had a good career over at Texas for the couple of years he, he played there. And, and, and look, I mean, he's been a great ambassador for the game, so that's going to help him get in the Hall of Fame, I believe, in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Because basically, they pretty much let everybody in the Hall of Fame in, in, the ba- in basketball, you know, whatever the level. So I, I think, mm-hmm. look, I think people need to kind of, you know, I, he'll get in. I think he won't get in right away, but I think he will get in eventually. So I think that's what happened was with that. Now, as far as the Nets, um, and and, and you know, cool to him for you know, thinking about his health and and, and whatnot. That mm-hmm. sounds pretty scary. That you know, he had that you know right before the game. He had that during the game. He had that regular heartbeat. And of course, you know, you never want to f around with your heart. So you exactly. Know, so you know that that's sort of you know props to him for you know thinking about his health and you know stepping away from the game and look I'm sure he'll probably he'll I'm sure he'll probably I don't know if he'll coach maybe he'll do some television or something you know maybe you know you never know what his next career you know chapter his career will be now as far as the game itself I mean look half the Nets didn't play people forget you know because of injuries and rest mm-hmm. I know folks at ESPN did not like that and I think that's why they kind of <laughs> try to avoid that but again look mm-hmm. you're still doing with you know these guys are playing like a very condensed schedule Mm-hmm. you know that this feels as it can see as short the season is so they're playing all these games sort of like in like I said in unison so of course they're going to take a day off or two and look you know look the Nets didn't score for like eight minutes so <laughs> for the, mm-hmm. well field goal they, 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 they you know they have free throws but they didn't score like a field goal for like in the last eight minutes of the game so the fact that they were able to do that and kind of hang on still I think that that's sort of a you know, a big, you know, victory in of itself. But look, I mean, this this the game didn't really mean too much. I mean, like, like, you know, Nash said, look, he's been through this. He knows, like, you don't want to show all your cards, you know, in one sitting, mm-hmm. you know, they'll probably end up playing in it for the, you know, in the conference finals anyway. So I'm not too, you know, Nets fans shouldn't be too worried and neither should the Nets players themselves. Look, half those guys didn't play. So I'm not too worried. But look, I think for, for MB, I think, you know, look, you've got the confidence now. And also too, you're kind of like in the driver's seats, you know, for, mm-hmm for MVP and now that you're back you're back healthy and I think he might look I think he probably is sort of cementing himself as the front runner for for MVP I think and before we move on to give you some of the highlighted games for this upcoming weekend uh the LA Clippers as I mentioned a few moments ago they defeated the Indiana Pacers on Tuesday uh they set all their starters to the following night in Detroit 
and they beat the Pistons by two points thanks to uh, Reggie Jackson, the former Piston, hitting the mm-hmm. last shot to win it 100-98. to Of course, uh, by the time this recording is released, they were already able to play their game against the uh, 76ers, and we'll review that game in our next episode. Uh, Lakina, the Clippers, I like the way they're playing right now. Uh, do I trust them come playoff time? I'm still on the fence, okay? And Paul George has been stepping up. Kawhi is always there. But Paul, for Paul George, even though he's playing good right now, I have a bigger question mark with him, especially uh, outside his first couple years with the Indiana Pacers. He hasn't shown up in the playoffs. I'll give him a pass in 2018 when he was with the OKC Thunder, and he was dealing with the shoulder injuries, okay? But outside of that, he hasn't shown up in the playoffs. We talked about what he did last year in the bubble. And I know you said he was going through some personal stuff. With that aside, uh, this should be a redemption year for Mr. George when the playoffs start. We haven't heard any controversies out of coming out of that team, coming out of that locker room this year. You have to give Tyron Lue, their new head coach, some credit, okay? But it's all about the playoffs for them. Even though they're playing good right now, it's all about the playoffs for them. Can they finally make it up with the Lakers being down right now, even though LeBron James and Anthony Davis are due back in a couple, two, three weeks? And can the Clippers finally take advantage? Especially now, given the injury to the uh, Denver Nuggets, Jamal Murray tore his ACL on Monday in an ugly injury at Golden State. We wish him the best. I know he's going to miss some of next year as well. But uh, uh, could, this, could the Clippers finally take advantage of this potential open door? I I think they can. I, I think, look, if you look at the standings right now, as of this recording, they're the, the number three seed. And with Denver mm-hmm. now, you know, you got to think they're going to be, they're going to have some issues as soon as, especially when they start playing tougher teams. Now all the, all the, all, all the owners will be on Jokic to kind of like sort of pick up the slack for both of them. And I, and I think, mm-hmm. and I think, look, but Denver, of course, look, I had Denver as kind of like a sleeper to win the championship, especially after what happened <laughs> In the bubble, you know, they, they gave the Lakers all they could handle. Mm-hmm. But, but again, not having Murray there to kind of like be that facilitator to kind of take the, take the pressure off Jokic. Now, that, now all the pressure is now going to be on Jokic. And look, it's going to yeah. be just see how long they can keep it up. I don't, yeah. think you they, know, I don't think they'll be able to. You know, especially, look, they've got a pretty like light schedule. They did win their first game against Miami. You know, but uh, but again, a couple of days uh, on Wednesday, their first game without Murray. But again, as it gets to the season, you gotta wonder: will not having him there, will that kind of like, you know, be sort of the thing that kind of like puts the nail in the Nuggets coffin for their postseason? You know, go or we'll advance in the postseason at the very least. So I don't know. I, I mean, look, we'll see. I think look, the Lakers once they get AD and once they well Anthony mm-hmm. Davis and once they get LeBron back, you got that they're gonna try to you know get back in that top half of the of the of the Western Conference. The Portland, they're still having their they're having their struggles. We'll see if maybe Dallas can make a move or maybe the Grizzlies mm-hmm. might make a move. I mean, look, the Warriors have been playing well lately too. Also, you know, props to um congrats to Steph Steph Curry who passes. Will Chamberlain in the um, score list for that franchise. He's been playing very well. The team's been playing very well. You know, a couple of days ago, the you know he became the Warriors, the Warriors' leading scorer. He's the fourth player to lead the franchise in scoring, assists, and three points made. So, <laughs> just 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 amazing what he's been able to do, even with everything that's going on. So they might make a move. So look, I think the Western Conference, that that bottom half of the Western Conference, is right there for kind of like positioning yourself to be away from that from those playing games. Yeah, you know, I've been on the Jamal Murray train for the last two or three years, Lakina, so that injury was very devastating. As we said before, we wish him the best on the, on the speedy recovery. Thank goodness they picked up Eric Gordon, huh? Oh, yeah. That, that, I'm, not say, I'm not saying he's he's no Jamal Murray. He's not, but it gives him a, uh, it gives Denver an extra body, and he's going to have to be that second fiddle to uh, Nikolai Jokic. Well, and other uh, supporting players got to step up as well. Paul Millsap, where are you? Yeah, look, he look, he was a big, you know, he was a big reason reason why they 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 won that game against the Heat a couple of days ago. So he was a big reason why. Like mm-hmm. Michael, look, Michael Porter Jr. You got that he'll probably have to step up too. Him too, yeah. And also to Monte Morris. So look, I think that look, there's going to be a lot of a lot. Of, they, they've got the, the the Denver's got the depth to kind of like help, you know, sort of. You know, they don't have to worry about Jamal Murray, but I'm 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 worried about the fact as against the playoffs. We saw what happened mm-hmm. last year. 
you know, Murray had that great performance, you know, Jokic did what he needed to do, but the, a lot of those supporting yep. cast, you know, just didn't, they didn't show up those last couple of games. So we'll see. Yeah, we will see. You're listening to the weekend edition of Second City Sports, along with Lakina McGee, which is she. I am Sydney Brown. That's me. As we talk about the National Basketball Association, quickly, Lakina, let's run through some of these games that people should pay attention to for this weekend. If you listen to us on our podcast platform, today is Saturday, so running down the schedule for the key games for today at 3.30 p.m. Chicago time on ESPN. It's the Utah Jazz taking on the Los Angeles Lakers. At 7 o'clock, we'll have the Cavaliers taking on the Bulls from the United Center. Of course, the headlight game on ABC at 7.30 p.m. will be the Golden State Warriors visiting the Boston Celtics. The Warriors at 500, Lakina. Uh, they're looking forward to making the playoffs. I said if the Warriors should stay healthy, i.e. Draymond Green, i.e. Steph Curry, they'll be part of the play-in tournament. Boston coming off their West Coast road trip. This will be their first home game uh, coming off that successful road trip. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a, a good game. Hopefully it is. Uh, we'll, we'll see um, – We'll, we'll see which uh, which which one of these two teams wants it the best. It's an important game for both teams. Oh, this this is the confidence purpose. That they also positioning too, playoff positioning. Yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be a big part. Cause like I said before, I mean, look, Boston. They've been they've been sort of like Neander. They've been you know getting good lately. Look, I think Golden State wants to try to get out of that you know ninth spot where the playing area is. So they're gonna try and probably position themselves there. So this is about playoff position at this point between these two teams, and it should be a, well, it should be a fun one over in Boston. Another you know after that game starts at eight o'clock Chicago time, we got Memphis and Milwaukee. John, they're on the back to back schedule. Talking about Memphis. Yep, ja, yeah, yeah, Ja versus Giannis. Giannis <laughs> is back now too. Come back from injury, so we'll see how he looks. Also, San Antonio Phoenix in the nightcap, so I'll be watching that game via my computer. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> a laptop or a laptop as a case, maybe. Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday games. Um, Indiana, Atlanta, that should be interesting one, too. Also, the first the first game of the doubleheader on Sunday, you got New Orleans and New York. You got, you know, Zion versus ESPN. Ju- on ESPN. You know, in New York, you got New Orleans versus the Knicks. I mean, that should be a fun one there. You got um, Zion versus Julius Randle. That should be a fun one there. And look, 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 look how, you know, how Zion has been playing. I mean, he's been looking mm-hmm. really good. I know he had some injury issues a couple of weeks ago. He started kind of getting back into the, back into the groove. Also the second game, a double header Brooklyn and the final on uh, tech Irish Miami. That should be a fun one. And we'll see how <laughs> many, we'll look, we'll see how many of those guys actually play for Brooklyn. Cause you know, of course, yeah. you know, you're seeing some various guys take, you know, breaks and such. Yeah, speaking of that first game on ESPN for Sunday, uh, the, I did watch some of this game via my computer. The Knicks and the Pelicans played on Wednesday down in the Bayou, and the Knicks had a little bit more than the Pelicans did, so this revenge will be on their minds for uh, the Pelicans as they go into MSG. Yes, sir. Um, the NBA first game, the NBA TV doubleheader. Look, I'm not going to say that they're going to upset the Mavs, but look, I mean, this is, you know, Sacramento and Dallas, they look, Sacramento has mm-hmm. given teams this, especially Dallas. So we are just to see what, what happens in that game. Also the second half of that doubleheader on NBA TV, um, you know, look, Minnesota, I mean, you know, look, I think that they're sort of oh, everything going up in Minnesota. I think they want to kind of get away from that. So they play the Clippers. That should be an interesting one there in Los Angeles. All right, let's head over to Monday's action, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. The Chicago Bulls will travel to Boston to take on the Celtics. At, at the same time, the Warriors will take on the Philadelphia 76ers on ESPN. Steph Curry will face off against Joel Embiid. Uh, the Warriors uh, are starting their East Coast road trip. Philadelphia has been on a roll. You know, once again, is more, this game is more important for the Warriors than it is for the Sixers. I, yeah, I think so too. I think, like I said, this is for playoff positioning. So look, Philly is at the top right now. I don't. They look. I know the Nets are sort of like right there behind them, but they can. I don't want to say they can afford to lose, but again, this is more important. Mm-hmm. Like you said, to the Warriors and to the Sixers. Now this game should have been on ESPN. At seven o'clock, we'll have the Phoenix Suns traveling to Wisconsin to take on the Milwaukee Bucks. This one I'm going to watch. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think that should be a that should be a lot of fun. Devin Booker versus Giannis, that should be a fun one. I think the team, look, I think those two teams are sort of like, you know, they got the number both for two seeds right now in their respective conferences. I am surprised that they did not. Well, well Milwaukee's the three seed right now as of right now, but mm-hmm. I'm kind of surprised that they this ESPN didn't get this game. I think this game would probably be better than you know Golden State and Philly. But you know, again, look, I don't, I don't make, the, I don't pick the games, I don't make the schedule, so you know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but uh, look, that the second half of that double header, Utah versus Lakers, hopefully, you know, Andre Drummond will be able to play. And look, I mean, this should be interesting, right? I mean, look, I think that the Lakers have been kind of like right there, like near the, you know, near like that top half or a fifth seed as of right now. And oh, look, I think hopefully now that you know, hopefully you'll have AD back. Well, oh, Anthony Davis, like I should say, you got another AD and Andre Drummond. But, you know, hopefully when, you know, Anthony Davis is back, also when LeBron's back, hopefully that we can kind of get, you know, get to that, you know, get be a full straight now just in time to sort of like for that playoff push. And at 8 o'clock on Monday, you'll have the Memphis Grizzlies continuing their road trip at Denver. Of course, a, a big game for both of these teams. The Grizzlies are still trying to uh, play their way into the play-in tournament. Denver is trying to establish a rotation and and trying to see who can step up in the place of the now injured Jamal Murray. And now let's head over to Tuesday's action, Lakina. Uh, we have the Charlotte Hornets taking on the New York Knicks at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time from Madison Square Garden. The first game of that TNT doubleheader at the same time is the Brooklyn Nets traveling to New Orleans to take on the Pelicans. That should be a fun one. Again, we'll see how many of the Nets, how many of the Nets players will actually be available for that game. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for injuries and whatnot, but also I'm looking forward to that second half of that doubleheader out west, out in Portland, the Clippers and the and the Blazers. I mean, look, I think the Blazers need to try to they, look. They need to get it mm-hmm. together because you know they're gonna they're gonna be people are gonna be pulling away from them quick. So I think Portland needs to kind of mm-hmm. like. They're the, they're the sixth seed right now, and I think that they want to try and move up and take advantage of some of the injury issues that the teams ahead of them are having. You need to be more consistent. They need to be more mm-hmm. consistent, I should say. Yep, and that's your um, games to look forward to for this weekend in the National Basketball Association. You're listening to the weekend edition of Second City Sports along with Lakina McGee. I'm Sydney Brown. We have a couple more topics to get to before we get out of here, Lakina. Of course, we'll get back to baseball just for a hot second. Of course, uh, this weekend, uh, the baseball celebrated the anniversary of Jack, the late Jackie Robinson of his first game back in 1947 of course every team in the major leagues uh, wore number 42 in thursday's action and in friday's action as well like you know, i've been uh, listening to quotes and reading commentary via social media and articles online uh, I, I know that we can come at this from this perspective and we're going to try to do this to have a productive conversation. I don't want to take too much time on it, but I think you kind of know where I'm going with this. We oh, hear this every mm-hmm. year. We hear this every year and I'll ask it here. Uh, would Jackie Robinson be proud of the amount of black American players playing today in major league baseball? Because at one time baseball was America's pastime, including in the, the black community here in America. Of course, I don't want to blame hip hop. I don't want to blame Michael Jordan, but let's be honest here. Since basketball has been uh, took over in the late seventies into the eighties and nineties and whatnot, basketball is the number one sport followed by football in this country, especially in the black community. And I know uh, major league baseball has, has tried their best to uh, start programs to encourage uh, black American kids to get into baseball. I know they said the RBI program out there, and I know they have King Griffey Jr., a Hall of Famer, who's working in the front office to try to uh, uh, cr- cr- come up with better programs and to encourage kids to play baseball as well. We saw what the Jackie Robinson um, team did a few years ago before that controversy here in Chicago in the Little League World Series back in 2014. Lakina, would Jackie Robinson, if he was alive today, be proud of the progress that's been made or lack thereof uh, due to the lack of black American players in baseball? I don't think I don't I don't think he would be. I, I think look, I, I actually saw a discussion with you know, a couple of our, our favorites on fan side at you know 
uh, our buddy Mark Carmen, you know, Mark Grody, you know, friend of the show from Six Seven the School, also veteran sports caster. He has his own podcast now, George Offerman. We got to get him on at, at some point. Said he's terrific. But um, yes, they 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 they, they said something about this on Thursday, and, and I think you know they they they're both right. I know. Look, I know these are three white men. People are going to make a big deal about that. But look, they actually made some really good points. The fact that I don't think. Like I think that you know, do people need to hear like the history of Jackie Robinson and what he went through, you know, to get to the point where he, you know, to able to break the color barrier. But also too, I think people need to raise awareness about getting more black players to play baseball. I mean, look, we saw, look, if you go to, you know, you look at any of the college baseball games, you know, it's great to see that, you know, you got more and more black players playing in mm-hmm. some of those colleges. And but then, you know, there was a point where in the HBCUs, you know, they have they had to recruit white and Hispanic players to fill out their rosters. So, mm-hmm. so I think people forget about that. So I think what needs to be done here is I think that look, folks just need to. I think that I think more needs to be done to kind of help. You know, get 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 more players there. Like you said, I know what Ken Griffey Jr. is doing, but maybe get maybe get somebody like mm-hmm. Curtis Granderson to kind of help out, or Tory Hunter, or you know, maybe mm-hmm. guys that you know, you know, people that guys that people know to kind of say, go to these inner cities, you know, to say, look, baseball's very expensive. I mean, you know, a bat, a ball, a glove, but they gotta find some place to play, and then you gotta you know recruit some of the some of the some of the inner city high schools. You know, a lot of them they have baseball fields, but again, a lot of these recruits don't want to don't want to get to them. So it, it'll be it's kind of interesting to see how all of this sort of you know plays out because I think both needs to be addressed. I think people need to really see the history of Jackie Rob and learn about the history of Jackie Robinson, but also mm-hmm. too people need to see that maybe there needs to be some more of an effort to try to get more more African Americans you know to play to play baseball. And also too, let's consider this factor as well. Uh, when you get drafted by the National Basketball Association and uh, you get drafted by the National Football League, you don't get your payday right away, if you know what I mean, Lakina. You, yeah. You're on your rookie deals, but you, you, you get some money to live off of if you don't blow it, okay? In baseball, you have to go to college. You don't have to go to college, but I know some players choose to go to college and or they go to the minor leagues where, you, unlike college, you will get paid, but but the not compared to a, the, a player who makes the league minimum, he gets paid more than your average minor league player. Okay, I think this also a factor as well. But at the same time, you got to have a love for the game. If you stay consistent within your craft, uh, you'll finally get called up to the major leagues. You'll finally get your payday. But it takes a little bit longer to get paid in major league baseball, unlike the other um, two sports that I mentioned. Unless you're like a very special player, unless you're really good at good, really good mm-hmm. at your position. Look, Ed Howard, who was a star on that Jackie Robinson West team, he's now with the Cubs organization. We all, mm-hmm. we we might be we might see him in about a year, maybe two years, who knows? But you know, look, he he stuck it out and he's become one of a, you know, a top prospect. So, you know, hopefully, you know, wishing all the best to him and maybe maybe having him there, maybe that'll help. Maybe get more inner city kids, you know, same backgrounds. A lot of these guys, you know, from the inner city, to are saying, "Look, hey, I made it, and you can make it too." You know, maybe have somebody like mm-hmm. him. I think. Look, I, I think that there, there's so. I don't think there's really a, a wrong answer, but there's not really a right answer. So I think that people just need mm-hmm. to figure out like what, what to do. And also, too, uh, can you reach if you're major league baseball? Can you reach out your advertisement to uh, your ad- market your game to? Uh, especially the uh, the younger generation in particular. Let, let's be honest here. Baseball has been slow to change, okay? And their market is still old white men, 54 and up. And I know they've been having rule changes these last couple of years to attract uh, the younger audience. Can you, can you tr- start attracting the young black audience to uh, perhaps get interested in baseball? I'm just asking a question. I'm not yeah. acting like I have all the answers because I don't, but but I mean, can they start doing that as well? Yeah, and I think that's going to be the thing, right, to get, you know, more and more. And, and, and look, it's unfortunate that the, it has to come to this, that people are kind of wondering, mm-hmm. like, okay, what what can be done? I think, look, baseball has a young – forget, like, you know, not just a black, you know, getting more black players to play in the sport problem, but they also have a, a ratings problem. You know, the fortune, mm-hmm. the, the average rating of some of the, you know, the fans, you know, people, the viewers that watch baseball has gone up. And and that's not good. It's like, 50, like in the up, like the late 50s, a guy in his late 50s. That's not good. So, 
they have a, you know, baseball has a problem all around. I think that, look, I think that it needs to be a broader discussion longer than we have to discuss. But I, look, I think that, mm-hmm. you know, I think the start, we had a couple of good, good starting points, you know, maybe have, you know, some prominent black players, you know, be as part of your, your initial to try to get more black, black players, especially to play the sport. Maybe have, maybe have some of the college players. So the top you know, college players are African-American in college baseball. Maybe have them come in and, you know, talk to young people. Say, look, look, if you want to stick it out, you can do that. So, but I think also, like you said, it's, it's also patience too. I think some, some players you want, you want to get paid right away. And look, even the G mm-hmm. League, you, you can get paid six figures now. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know if there is a right answer, but you know, if, if you, if you have the right answer, please tell me because I, I, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, a couple of shout outs here real quick before we uh, move on. Uh, shout out to Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports Radio's Rob Parker. I know he started a website called MLBBro.com. So they track every black and brown player in Major League Baseball because of the percentages of so We actually give the history of the past players and, and, and give uh, updates on the current players as well. So shout outs to him. Hopefully we can get him on this podcast in the near future. And also, too, uh, ch- this is uh, – Going back to marketing, this is the reason why that that the White Sox are assume, assuming they start winning here, they're going to become one of the most popular teams in Major League Baseball uh, is because of Tim Anderson. We talked about it before, Lakina. He may not be the best player on the team, but he has the swagger and he attracts a lot of young fans. He's attracted me as a fan, and even though I'm 29 on this podcast, but uh, even as a a, a fan uh, outside the young demographic. You know, he, he attracts me as well because I'm not just a person that just looks like me, but uh, he carries himself in a well-professional manner. He hasn't gotten into any trouble. He embraces the challenge of uh, being one of the few black players, black American players in baseball. He wants that responsibility to help that next generation, and he's doing that both on and off the field. We have three uh, black American players in the city of Chicago, two on the Sox, one on the Cubs. Uh, Jason Hayward on the Chicago Cubs currently and on the Sox. Uh, Billy Hamilton is the other one outside of Tim Anderson as well. So uh, it you want to say it's a proven, but it's, it's still a slow process. Yeah. Well, I think that look down the line, I think we'll have, we'll figure it out. But like I said, it's not like we'll, we'll save some other stuff for another discussion. Cause mm-hmm. I think like this is, this is, I think I don't think there's really a right answer here, but I don't think there's a wrong answer either. So I don't look, I don't have all the answers. So I think let's, let's, you know, let hopefully you know, look, I think that baseball needs to figure out what can they do, not just for, you know, black players, but also they you know, to get younger, more younger players to play. Yep. We shall see. Look, you know, let's end the show on a good note. There's a couple of documentaries that will be, be debuting soon on ESPN perhaps I believe one for sure is next month ESPN's upcoming WNBA bubble documentary documentary 144 will premiere May 13th this film will premiere with footage from inside last season's pandemic uh, necessitated a uh, bubble and of course you mentioned earlier uh, about the doc- another documentary that's coming up and I believe in a couple of weeks about American Gladiators I remember watching that show Lakina American Gladiators. I thought it was fake for a minute, but I started to get hooked a little bit thanks to my cousins. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, I wasn't a super fan, but I respected what they did. And there's an, a Chicago connection to this. Now, he, I know his health is uh, is a little shaky, but former Chicago sports anchor and former Chicago Bears running back Mike Adamley, he was one of the commentators for um, uh, the American Gladi- Gladiators. I remember watching that every weekend in the 90s on uh is now my 50 Chicago, but the old WPWR TV mm-hmm. uh, during the weekends, especially on Saturdays. But I thought it was fake at first, but the, those, uh, those were athletes. They really competed. Yeah. I mean, and look, that was sort of like my right ritual on Saturdays. I mean, after the cartoons yeah. go off after like, you know, all the weekend specials and stuff like that go off. After I mean, the soul train. <laughs> yeah. After the soul train too. So, you know, the American Gladiators was next and, and look, I yep. think, Look, I think that that was it was a different kind of show. I mean, yes, I'm sure a lot of people thought thought it was fake, you know, back in the mm-hmm. back in the day. So, like, because wrestling, people were starting to figure out that wrestling was you know yep. fake. A lot of mm-hmm. people thought that American Gladiators was fake, but uh, no, it wasn't. Like I said, I was one of them. I was one of them in the beginning. But but, but yeah, but yeah, in the beginning. But yeah, look, the, 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 these are you know, look, a lot of those guys are still around, you know, in, in various forms. I know, like, um, um, you know, that they're like some of the, some are actually acting now, you know, having a legitimate acting career. So I, I'm, I'm a, look, I, I think that, look, this is going to be, 
this could be a good docu series. This will bring back some memories. Um, I think uh, Larry Zonka was also a host on the show. Sadly, Todd Christian, Christian, who was another host, you know, sadly uh, passed away a few years back. But mm -hmm. But I'm sure, look, I'm sure they'll have interviews with a lot of the guys. I'm hoping that it, it comes on uh, ESPN, not on ESPN Plus. Because I think, look, I think that, you know, they, they, tried, they tried to bring the show back a few years ago. It didn't, with uh, Hulk Hogan and Leila Lee, it didn't work, so. I but, forgot about that. Yeah, it didn't work. But, but, you know, but look, I think that you know, for what it was, I think it kind of like epitomized, you know, television and, and competition reality shows in that sense, you know, to get to a whole nother level. So. It'll be interesting to see how, how that looks. I mean, you know, getting a chance to sort of, you know, catch up with some of the gladiators and such. You know, they, they actually have female gladiators too, which was unheard of back then. They yeah. kind of like broke yeah. that mold. So, you know, it, it's tough. Yeah, one more quick story before we get up out of here for this week. Uh, the, the Spring Football League will premiere on Fox and along with FS1 and FS2. Uh, this is from my good friends at Awful Announcing. Football fans looking forward to an on-field fix in May and June can watch some games from the Spring League Developmental League returning for a fifth season. The, the 2021 season is expanding from a four-week to a six-week schedule beginning on May 6th with a doubleheader on FS1. And for the first time, the Spring Football League games will be shown on broadcast television with six regular season matchups and three league championship games in the league's championship game scheduled to be on Fox. Each of the Fox telecasts cast will air on Saturday afternoons. FS1 and FS2 will televise the other 18 games in prime time on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Broadcast teams and production information will be announced soon. Additionally, all spring league games can be viewed on the Fox Sports app and at foxsports.com. And the league is also increasing its number of teams from six to eight adding uh, a couple of the teams in the league will divide those eight clubs between two central hubs in Indianapolis and Houston. Lakina, are you interested in this? Is it too much football overload, or are you just looking forward to NFL and college football? I mean, you can never have too much football, but I think this is sort of a lead, you know, to kind of get, you know, keep guys in shape. So, I mean, look, it, 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 it's, it's, look it's good to have it's a nice alternative. If, if you're not really a, ba a big baseball person mm -hmm. and you want to, you know, kind of stick with, you know, if you're ready for football, it, it's fine. I mean, we'll see how the ratings are, but it'll be interesting to see. Isn't the XFL supposed to be coming back next year with The that, Rock, that, if I'm yeah, not mistaken? Yeah, supposedly. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that also. So, yeah, so, yeah, that's true. Look, look, I mean, I might check it out. I'm not, I'm not going to be like a, like a huge, huge fan of it. But, look, I mean, for those who, you know, who are going to want their football fix, well, we'll, be, we'll see. Yeah, like I said before, it's not going to outlast the NFL. We saw with that AAF league a couple of years ago, they tried to start, they shut that thing, that thing down due to financial issues a couple of years ago. And of course, we all know the history of the XFL, both what happened last year and, of course, what happened 20 plus years ago. Uh, so, like I said, I'll probably check it out, but <clears throat> if it's boring, I'll turn or I'll just use it as a nap. <laughs> yeah, for napping. Also, too, um, Peyton Manning, you know, is going to be, you know, bringing back something, you know, from way back in the day, the College Bowl. You know, for those who don't know what that is, it's not 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 like college football or anything like that. It's like a, this is an academic type bowl. Um, you know, this is going it's going to be on NBC in June. Um, it'll have 12 selected schools will compete in the bracketed tournament at, uh, over four rounds. Will team will fly for the most points. They'll the team who has the most points will get scholarships. Schools from um, I thought I saw the list here. Oh, uh, Minnesota, Auburn, Alabama, Columbia, Michigan, Minnesota, Ole Miss, Morehouse, Tennessee, USC, UCLA, Virginia, and Xavier University of Louisiana. So Peyton Manning, who people forget was also a two, a three-time, I should say, academic All-American. So he'll be hosting mm -hmm. that series. And this is, of course, you know, in remake of the, you know, the College Bowl series that happened back way back in the 60s. Or actually, has those are way back in, actually, also in the 80s, too, where Pat Sajak, you know, a pre Wheel of Fortune, he actually doing Wheel of Fortune at the same time at the time. You know, this, mm -hmm. is, this lasted from, like, in the 60s, like, early, early 80s. So, and, you know, Pat Sajak was the most recent host of that show. So, Bring it back old, you know, and Alan Ludden hosted the, you know, the original version. So from back mm -hmm. in the day, it was back then it was, a, it was a GE College Bowl. So a little history there, lesson for, for you folks. 
Real quick before you wrap up, uh, we just brought up Soul Train a moment ago. Remember that, uh, unfortunately, this show doesn't exist anymore. For those of you in Chicago and across the country that had WGN on your cable system, remember every Saturday in February, I believe it came, it came on, I think, right after Soul Train? Know your remember heritage. Know Your Heritage? Yes, yes, I, I used do. to watch that show, and I know during my teenage years, my mother forced me to watch that show. <laughs> I'm not saying that show wasn't needed then, but where is that show? That's a good question. I think you. Would think. I know. I know it's on Channel Seven locally here in Chicago uh -huh. for a short time, I believe. Or the ABC affiliate. I think NBC Five may have shown it a couple years, but I know uh, the majority of the time it was on Channel Nine, WGN TV. Mm -hmm. We need that show now more than ever. I'm all, I'm all for learning about everybody else's culture. Of course, it makes you smarter and all that. But where is that show? I remember and watching that show when I was in high school and late grade school years for me. Yeah, if we remember too, back in the later seasons, they started adding more Hispanic history, Asian American history. So I think it kind of expanded past African American history. So yeah, I think look, this is mm -hmm. you. Know, I think that a show that is needed now, especially that's why I think that's why they're bringing on college. You know, this this, this version of College Bowl is because mm -hmm. you got two HBCU schools participating, of course, in Morehouse and Xavier of Louisiana, which is in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. You know. And I think, look, this is very cool, a great opportunity for these, you know, these young people to kind of show, look, I mean, these, these young kids are pretty smart. And I think, look, we know how much Peyton Manning loves competition. So, look, yeah. his, his alma mater is going to be participating. So, of course, he's not going to you know, play fairs, obviously. But, uh, but this should be very, <laughs> look, this is going to be very interesting to see how, how he does. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people going to be logging for him to be the new host of Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, we shall, we shall see about that. Uh, they'll do it for this uh, latest weekend edition of Second City Sports. You can follow yours truly, Sydney Brown, on the Twitter and the IG at SidK80. Once again, at SidK80. That's S I D K I D A 0. S I D K I D A 0. You can follow me at Keena McGee on the Twitter and at Keena McGee on the IG. You can catch uh, this episode and all episodes of Second City Sports first right here on YouTube at War Media. Once again, at W-A-R-R -R Media every Monday and every Friday. Once again, you can catch Second City Sports first on YouTube right here at War Media on YouTube every Monday and Friday. Our podcast schedule never changes. still on Tuesdays and Saturdays on War on Anchor. That's every Tuesday and every Saturday. On War on Anchor, that's W-A-R-R -R on Anchor. That kicks you over to Spotify, you, uh, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, and that iHeartRadio app. You can go to our website, weareregalradio.com. That's W-E-A-R-E-R-E-G-A-L, radio.com. And you can follow us on all social media platforms. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at War Media. Once again, at W-A-R-R -R Media. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Like, share, subscribe, and tell your friends. And thank you very much in advance for your support. For Sid, I'm Lakina. Be go stay warm out there because it's gonna get a little cooler. Mm -hmm. And also, too, look, be good to each other. I know people are getting vaccinated, but you know, let, let's look. We're not, we're not, we're not there yet, folks. We're we're kind of in the home stretch. But look, get your look. If you want to get your vaccines, get it. If not, you know, wash your hands, keep your mask on, mm -hmm. and keep your distance. And just you know, we're almost there, folks. But you know, look, stay safe out there too, Chicago and and beyond. Uh, in, in the programming, though, we'll have a special episode of Second City Sports featuring good friend of the show, Miss Janice Scurrio, who, who covers uh, baseball for NBC Sports, and she's a co-host of a White Sox podcast. She'll be on, she's, she was already on with us discussing Carlos Rodon's uh, no-hitter from this past Wednesday, so check that out. We had a great conversation with her. That's once again right here on YouTube at War Media and on the podcast platform at War on Anchor. Yeah, so look out for that coming up in a couple of next you know, day, maybe two days. So once again, for Sid, I'm the Kansas. This has been Second City Sports Zoom Style, and we'll see you next week. Till next time, holla! <laughs>